Good job. Did you get him? Whoever was that anti-tank nah. guy and got like I, I don't two think fucking... I, I don't think I... I don't think I got him. I think they just were really tired and they decided they have to lay down for a moment. Can, can some guy go up and confirm that they're dead? Yeah. They look okay. pretty fucking dead to me. I mean, I think yeah, one of them's missing half Better safe than sorry, dude. Better safe than sorry? I hit them with the 30 millimeter, dude. Hey, you never know, man. You never know. It might be Superman or something. Are you retarded or something? Maybe. Maybe Was it to you? Them. Yeah, they're definitely yeah, they're dead. Yeah, they're both very dead. I just want to make sure, dude. I'm sorry. I told it's you not that I dead. trust in you. Maybe they're just pretending. Go over there and poke them. Shoot them. I shot them in the head a few times. Say hello shoot and him see if they Shoot answer. him again, maybe it's Superman. Shoot him again. What's up guys, Borsad here. This past weekend, the online multiplayer FPS game squad celebrated the release of their new Alpha 9.2 patch as well as a new map titled Al Buzzerat by having a free weekend. Now, I never buy Alpha builds, so I reckon why not give this one a bash? I mean, I've heard so many positive things about it, and it is free. And while I must say that it does in fact live up to most of its praise, however, it's not really a game that I can see myself buying just yet. At least not until the game's final build is released. When that day comes and there are more South African servers, I will be all over this. Now, I just want to share my thoughts with you guys. So obviously, this isn't a review, as the game has already come out quite a long time ago, so it's pretty much pointless. So, right off the bat, I wanted to get this whale out of the room. This game's performance sucks hairy donkey balls. However, the game is still an alpha, so it is to be expected. There was only one South African server which was hardly populated, and I think that's because not everyone is aware of the recent addition. So for the vast majority of the time, I was on European servers with that awful ping of over 200 milliseconds. Now there was some rubber banding every now and then, but nothing too serious. And I mean, other than that, I didn't have any real issues. This game bridges the gap quite nicely between Battlefield and Armour, and so it was quite refreshing to have a change of pace. The first thing I learned when joining around is that there is no such thing as Lone Wolf in this game. Besides for almost always dying by yourself when wandering off, there will be those players that will straight up school you on what you can and cannot do. Mate, please follow my order. Seriously. Please don't play Call of Duty or whatever you are playing. You have to play in the squad. Don't run around one by one. And I must say, I was quite shocked by how seriously a lot of people that play this game take it. But that's the thing though, this isn't your COD or Battlefield game. And despite the game having such a small player base, those that do play take it seriously. And for the most part, they will tolerate the occasional noob. So now, the squad's HUD only displays essential information, such as the compass in the bottom of the screen. There is no mini map or ammo count for weapons, only the amount of magazines left is displayed, which really helps maintain your sense of immersion. And I felt right at home, I mean my favourite game is Battlefield 4 and I play exclusively on hardcore servers, so yeah, I was quite thankful. The infantry movement, stances and stamina influence weapons way, but you can hold your breath in order to stabilise your weapon for a short period of time. So unlike Battlefield, you can't sprint a fucking mile, then stop and fire a perfectly aimed burst at someone. That did catch me off guard more often than not, but well, you live, you learn. Now, because teamwork is a prime focus of the game, there is an asset claiming system in place, meaning only squad leaders can unlock vehicles for their squad to use, which is both awesome but fucking annoying as hell at the same time. And I'm talking about those long ass runs back to the action after dying. Now because of that, placing those spawn beacons is so so important. Well, at least for me. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I hate spending like 5 minutes running back to the action because my squad leader wouldn't claim a vehicle for us. If you land up being a squad leader and you don't know what you're doing, please, for the love of God, promote an experienced player to take on that role or you will just land up ruining everyone's experience.
The communication system is quite impressive to say the least. Since success in squad relies extensively on teamwork and coordination, there are a few ways for the commander, squad leaders and their respected members to talk to the teammates over VoIP. Now these include the global squad leader channel, where the squad leaders and commander can talk to all other squad leaders simultaneously. The squad leader channel, where the squad leaders and the commander can talk to a specific squad leader using numpad 1 through 9. The squad channel, where the squad leader and his members can talk to each other. And lastly, the local positional speech method for talking to teammates in close proximity. One of my favorite aspects of squad is the kit roll system. There are many types of classes to choose from. Since the game is based around real world conflicts, you are only able to use standard issue gear. Thankfully, there is some weapon customization, such as different types of sights and attachments. There is a limit to how many of each kit can be in a squad and on a team, so thank god you don't land up having situations where a disproportionate amount of players are running around with fucking sniper rifles. Now, many of the kits require two or more people to be in the same squad, and if a player leaves or is kicked out of the squad, then he will lose his current kit and receive a recruit kit instead. Now I got to play on the new map, Al Bazahara, and I must say it was fucking awesome. So many windows, so many angles. You can pretty much walk into any structure and go through nearly all of its rooms. I got into so many unexpected firefights from so many different angles, it was quite something. There was hardly ever a moment that I wasn't kept on my toes, and a great deal of tactics need to go into your approach. There is absolutely no room for lone wolf battlefield players here. So, this map was awesome and the game is amazing. I can't wait to see what the final product will be. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please drop a like and subscribe. And if you really liked it, please share this video on social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Anyways guys, until next time, take care of yourselves and have a chilled one.